Hi everyone, Sparrow here from Atusu Crafts, your independent Stampin' Up! demonstrators based here in the UK. Thank you so much for joining me today for this week's Fun Fold Friday video tutorial. For today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can make a magic slider card, which is this one right here. So it looks very plain and simple to start off with, um, but you pull this and then that happens. All right, so this is called a magic slider card. It is gonna be one which you can then write on the back and then it will then stand up like so, so it's then able to stand on display. But yes, so this is a magic slider card and that is what I'm gonna show you how to create today. I'm gonna to be using the B Jolly stamp set along with some other products as well and tools. So all the products which you see me use can be purchased from us via our online shop. Links to our online shop can be found down below in the description, as well as any other links you may find useful or interesting as well. So yes, they are down below in the description. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please remember to give us the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button somewhere over here as well. Please make sure you hit the bell or notifications button as well to be notified of when we post all of our videos. We come live to you twice a week on a Wednesday and a Sunday at 7 p.m. And we record this video for you on a Friday, which goes out at 6 p.m. So great. So yes, so please remember to hit that subscribe and thumbs up if you are enjoying what you're seeing. Anyway, so let's crack on. Let's show you how you make your very own magic slider card, one of these right here. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Okay, so as mentioned, I'm gonna be using this lovely Be Jolly stamp set here. I think it's perfect for one of these types of card because it's some lovely line art suitable for colouring as well. So this is what we are going to be using today. I'm only going to be using the one on the Santa's and the tree and the bird or and a and a sentiment as well. I'm not, I'm not going to be using the sleigh on this one or one of the alternative Santa's. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Okay. I'll go through the measurements for you in a second. You it's this this type of card is very important that you have a stamping platform. So we're going to be using the stamparatus right here. Very important for this one here so you can get lining up all sorted and perfect. So if you haven't got one of these, this is called a stamparatus. Um, and it's one which you can purchase from us as well. So as for the measurements, you're gonna to need to take yourself some Pop that to one side. I'll bring it inside so you can then maybe take a screenshot of that. But I will pop the measurements down below as well. There'll be a link to our website with a link to the blog, which will be down below, which will have the measurements. I'm going to be going in centimetres for this one, but I will have the inches down as well, and I will have those written down for you. Okay, so I've got myself a bit of crumb cake here. So this is measuring 24 centimetres by 14.6 centimetres. So I've got a bit of that one. I have got myself three pieces here. I've got myself a bit of basic white normal. This is measuring 10.2 by 14.1. I've got myself a bit of acetate, so a window sheet. So this is the same, 10 by 14.1. And a bit of chosen designer series paper here, again, measuring 10 by 14.1. So those three need to be exactly the same size, okay? And then I've got myself a bit of scrap, which will be for some stamping and for doing the, the pull-out part as well. But they are the three, they, they're the four pieces which you, are, are important for this one. Remember, those three need to be exactly the same size. What you're going to need to do is you're going to need to take your card base, the piece which was measuring 24 centimetres by 14.6, and we're going to do some scoring on this. So you need to score this on the long edge, okay, at six centimeters, six and a half centimeters, 17 centimeters, and 17 and a half centimeters. Okay, so that was six, six and a half, 17, and 17 and a half. So that's what you will need for that one there, okay? What I would suggest you do is just grab yourself a pen and dust, I'm just going to turn it over because this is going to be the inside of my card and I'm just going to put a little mark here just to remind me this is actually the top of the card. Okay. So that's that one. What I want to do is I now want to do some die cutting. 
So I'm going to take my piece of designer series paper. Now this is the paper from the Peaceful Prints designer series paper. And I have got myself some rectangle dies. So these are the dies, so which are the stitched rectangle dies. And I've got myself three of these, which are the nesting. So I've got myself one there. So obviously you choose your sizes depending on what you've got. But I've got these are the, like the, some of the bigger ones. It's not the biggest. It's like the second or third one down from the biggest. But I've got the three nesting dies right there. Okay, I'm going to start off with the largest one and I'm going to be die cutting that. The largest die is going to be die cut out of the design series paper. All right, what I suggest you do is you grab yourself some removable tape or some something which is some low tack tape to hold this in place as you run it through your machine. Once you've got that stuck down and in place nicely, then just run that through your die cutting machine. And there we have it. So there's our frame here. Bring in your piece again here, which is your card base. Remember I've got the top is at the top and then you can then go ahead and then you can then stick this designer series piece of paper down onto this card base, okay? So that there is now the starting of our magic slider card. So we've got this ready. This part which we die cut, save this one here because we can use this for decoration later on. So just carefully peel this away, making sure that your low tack tape doesn't tear your paper. Because sometimes it does once it goes through the machine. So just be careful when pulling this off and pop this to one side. We'll save this part for later on. What you want to do now is you want to now grab the second die down from what you have actually used, so the second nesting die down. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pop this in the middle of this frame here. We're going to stick it down with the low tack tape again once we're happy with the position and it's even all the way around. And then we're going to then run this through the die cutter machine once again. There we have it. So we have our hole in our card ready to make our magic slider card. What I would say you can do now is fold and burnish these score lines. So there you have the card which is now ready to start getting the mechanisms inside. I just love this. It's almost like a bit of a gatefold card which you've created but it's the back way round and then we're using the back side to actually be the front ready. So it's kind of like a reverse gatefold card. Now what we want to do is we now want to take our pieces, basic white and our window sheet, okay? And this is where the stamping platform comes in really handy, okay? So I'm just gonna get this ready. And first things first is I'm going to be stamping the Santa and I'm going to be stamping the and the sentiment. So the best thing for you to do on this one is for you to pop your so pop your basic white in the corner, pop a magnet up the top here and a magnet down the bottom. Now ours is broken, but obviously I've got which is why I've got two down there, but it still works perfectly fine. And obviously the great thing with this was once it's buttered up into the corner, when you come to then stamp on the window sheet and you butt it into the corner, it's going to be in exactly the same position. What I would suggest you do is that you just look at your positioning here as well. So before you set it up, just kind of lay this over the top of it to have a little look to make sure you're happy with the positioning of your stamps and then you can then pop it down and pop it in place. But I've obviously, I've, I've already got mine in a position where I want them, so I've, all I did is I just kind of eyeballed it roughly where I wanted it to be, and then stuck these down where I needed it, okay? Pop my paper in, and I'm gonna be stamping this, because I'm gonna be coloring these with stamping blends, so the alcohol markers, I'm gonna be using Memento. When we come to stamp on the acetate, I will need stays on. You're going to need a permanent ink. This won't work with this one. This one is what you're going to need. So you will need a stays on ink pad for this one. So I'm going to ink these ones up first because I'm colouring these ones in memento. And there we 
there we have it okay and what i want to do on this one is i want to add the tree to this as well and this is another thing which is why i just love our stamping platform because we can take this off i've already got my have my tree in position i turn this one round and then i can then stamp my tree over this as well but what's going to happen is i need to mask off this santa first so what i've done is i've used a bit of sticky note and i've just cut myself out like a little bit of a mask and that there is going to just going to just go over the center here and see i haven't worried about fussy cutting this side out because i'm just worrying about stamping on this side pop that over that one there and then i will then ink up my tree using memento as well and there we have it so once i remove that mask it looks like the tree is now behind santa right there so really really good so just have yourself a little mask you can then keep this and keep it in the stamp set and then that there is ready for another time if you as and when you need it if you want to do some more masking so that there is my stamping done for the inside of the card what i'm going to do now is i'm going to then do some coloring on this one but what i can do now is i am can actually do the stamp before i do my coloring i will do the stamping on the window sheet so the same thing pop your window sheet in butt up against the corner use your magnets to hold it in place make sure it's in that corner nicely over okay but now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to stamp in stays on okay because this there will then be a permanent ink and will stick to the shiny surface so you stays on and that's that one use that mask one more time okay we can remove your mask and then what we've got here is we have got the exact same image as we have so when we pop these two together they then line up on top of each other and that's what you need that's the secret to this is you need them to you need the window sheet and you need this one to be exactly the same same image okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to do some coloring on this piece right here so I've got myself a selection of blends here. So I've got myself the Poppy Parade Dark and Light, so the combo pack. I have got myself the Soft Suede Light and Dark combo. I've got myself a Bronze. I've got myself some Yellow, some Daffodil Delight. I've got myself some Highland Heather, Granny Apple Green and Balmy Blue and some Black as well. So I'm just gonna, gonna just sit here and just color this in. So just relax and watch whilst I do that, and then I'll show you how to actually construct this. the finished colouring so you may have noticed I added the robin in there as well so the robin isn't on any of these but it is on that one so as it reveals the robin would appear as well all right now what I'm just going to do with this is I'm just going to now just do some blending with this using one of the blending brushes so I'm just going to go with a light colour and I've got myself some balmy blue and one of the blending brushes and i'm just going to do some blending around the outside just to kind of just get rid of some of this whiteness so that the middle pops out a little bit more so i'm just going to do that now
there we go that's that one done so that's then will just help make that pop off the page so once that reveals from white and goes up it will just by doing that vignette around it so just by add sponging that color onto that one has just made it just it's kind of spotlighted this a little bit here so helped bring this out a little bit and it just makes it pop off the page a little bit more so it's just something which you can do there all right so that there is all of our pieces now ready one more thing which i want to do with die cutting wise is i want to take the smallest die cut now so which is the next one down and i just want to then die cut myself out one of these rectangles here which can then get stuck onto these and then i'll then stick these all together that's good so they're, they're the off cuts which we had so what you can do now is just go ahead and then stick the basic white to this one stick this one to the designer series paper and this then this is the part which is suitable for writing your sentiment on it is also the part which is then also going to then cover up the the blending on the back here because we can stick it over the top of this perfect so just pop that one to one side and then that can get stuck on at the very end but it's now at least it's ready now to pop on to cover up the cover up the the ink seeping through so here is the technical part all right so what we need to do is we need to take our card again here now remember this here once that gets stuck onto the middle that there is how that is going to then look okay and what we want to do is we now need to create ourselves like a a bar a, like a, a a barrier for the slider card to go through. So you're going to need to use some of the foam adhesive strips. You can use dimensionals. I found it easier with the foam adhesive strips because it gave you a straight line um, to go down, and which then so then the slider part didn't snag as you pulled it out. So if you can get these, these are the foam adhesive strips. So product number one four one eight two five. Um, these will be perfect for this. These are also good for like shaker cards and things like that as well. So you get like a big strip of these ones on here and yeah, they are perfect for this. We've had these for a long time. We'd only use these for like special projects so everything else will be dimensionals. These come out when and as and when you need them. So they're kind of like, yeah, they're a special one. But yeah, so you can use dimensionals as well, but just be careful that you try and make sure that your dimensionals are all straight going down the edge. So what I want to do is I want to take off some of these. I want to try and get this into three if I can. So it is 23 centimetres. So if I say take it to, um, let's say take it to around about nine, nine, and then the bottom, then the remainder can then be the the bit for the base so it makes sense so i'm just going to grab one of my markers which i've got here just briefly and i'm just going to cut this I'm just going to measure this at nine centimeters nine centimeters just so i've then got a little bit at the bottom there this doesn't need to be approximate it's just so i can get the best out of my strips so one strip will do one card okay so i've just cut that there and then what I want to do, keep that nice and straight. And then I want to then stick this to the edge of the card like this, as close as you can get it. Because on the pulling out part, there's no real measurements for this. It depends on how well you do this part here. So we'll measure that one as and when we get to it. So it doesn't matter if these are in different positions too much but you want to try and get it as close to the edge as you possibly can and I would say up to the top and try and get it straight as you're going down like that okay and then this one down here the small piece can then go down at the bottom bearing in mind it needs to be stuck underneath this part so you just need to make sure you pop that down like that and that's just gonna what that will do is that will stop the sliding mechanism from falling through okay so I've got a channel going down here, got it made a channel there, and then I've got a stopper at the bottom. Okay. And that's all you need to do. What the next thing which you would be advisable to do is to cut your your pulling out part now. Alright. So I'm going to now measure with my ruler this gap here, which is approximately so I've got approximately nine centimeters 
here. So if I cut a piece which is approximately nine centimeters, that there is then gonna slide in like that. So it needs to be long enough that it's gonna be poking out the top here. So this is approximately about an A5 and it's then that channel. So you can see now those channels, it was gonna slide in and out quite, quite nicely. So for the length of this, I'll just tell you this one here is going to be, so you can start off with a piece, which this is 15 and a half centimeters, okay? Um, by whatever this was, so nine, uh, I measured this. So if you if your strips are in a uh, fatter and you've created yourself a gap which is narrower, just measure it and then you then cut that one there to depend on what this channel is inside. Bearing in mind though, that you don't want to be something, you don't want nothing too fat that it's going to start showing over on this part here. So remember, it all needs to be hidden by these outside parts. It's good, so that's that one. We get that part ready now. So I've got myself a detailed trio punch right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to round off the edges. And then I'm gonna then do the decoration on the edges here as well. I'm just going to then pop a little hole in the top so I can then feed my ribbon through it. So I've kind of created myself like a little tag. What I may want to do is maybe just take a sliver off the bottom round here so I can then, that will then stick out the card like so. But I will do that at the end once it's all in there and it's all constructed. I can then see, I can actually see that now once that's in. Depends on how far out the top you actually want it to be. So if you want it to, if you want it to go down a little bit further, cut a bit off the bottom. If you're okay with that, you can do. I may just take a sliver off the bottom. So I've taken five millimeters off the bottom and that would then just make it sit in. But again, this is all depending on how well you, as and when you stick your dimensionals or your foam adhesive so this is just depending on what you've got so eyeball this one all right so we are nearly ready to finish these off um with the tag with the puller we will then just do ourselves a ribbon on top so i'm going to be using the glittered organdy ribbon i will just fold that in half and then just cut that. And then what I'm gonna then do is then feed this through this little hole. Feed it through like that. And then just pull that to and that kind of creates your, makes it a bit obvious that you've got to put it off. You can then just tidy this off and then just snip that down. So that is the tag part ready for the inside of the card. Right, so here is the important part. What we now need to do is we now need to line this up over the top of this on those foam adhesives. Okay. So what you want to do is remove your foam adhesives. Now I'd say remove the foam, when I did this, remove the foam adhesive from one side to start off with. And then you then want to then kind of line this up over the top of this and then stick it down. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull this down a little bit closer to me so I can see this. Okay, and then once I'm happy, I can then stick it down on one side. It will look a little bit, it's almost a little bit holographic. You know, when you, you get one of those rulers or something, those pictures which used to do this to it, and it used to go through, it will look a little bit like that, but just do your best to get that lined up. And then once you're happy with that, looks like I kind of almost the way pushed it down on there and then pushed the sides down. So that's another way you can do it, is push the center down 
and then connect the sides as well. Once you're happy with that, you can then go ahead and then you can then peel off these pieces and the base. The reason I didn't do all of it to start off with is that it's easier to remove one sticky strip than it is to remove all three of them. And then once you're happy with that, then just stick that down and stick that down. And there you have it, okay? So that there is your how you create that channel. So I've seen some of them where it's a little bit more where it's put down, it's, it's close to the image. I quite like this one where it's got this channel. It makes it easier, I think, um, for this. So this is, I think, a, a slightly simplified version of this ma ma magic slider card. So once you've done that, we need to then put this inside the card. So I've got myself some Stampin' Seal Plus. Remember, my top of my card was where I had the mark. So that there is then going to go in and stick in like that. So I need to pop some Stamp and Seal Plus around all the edge around here. So I'm using the Plus because this is a strong adhesive. So this is something which is then going to then really stick this in. Go all the way around the outside. And then once you're happy with that, then centralise this in here and then stick it down. All right, so that's stuck in. It's not going anywhere now. All right, then to finish that part off, you may as well then just, once you've got it on the back side, you may as well then just stick this part, which we prepared earlier on, over the coloring. So it then hides that ugly, that ugly backing. And then you can then write a sentiment. So you may not want to actually stick the the white part down on this depending on how easy you find it is to writing on the cards you can either leave the white part off if you want to for now but you can then just at least have to have it covered up and then you can then just die cut that out as and when you've written your sentiment in there and then to finish this card off we then grab our slider part which then goes between those acetate, the acetate and the and the image slots in there, sticks out so it's easy. And then when the person receives it, they do that, and then they get a coloured image underneath. I love it. I think it's great. Isn't that amazing? It's just so fun. It's quite, it is very easy to do. So once you've done it a few times, you'll be able to knock these cards out. Obviously I've only made, this is, this is the second one I've made. I've made one, which was my prototype, which was this one here. And this is the second card I've made. And they are so easy to make. You just need to make sure that you, the, the hardest part is making sure that you line up the stamped image on your window sheet to your stamped image on the bit underneath so that you just get a complete, it just looks like it's just one image. And then when you pull this out, it does that. Okay. And then if you want to, the person can then just tuck that in behind and then have it on display. So then it's, it's gonna always be on display with a color in there. But if you want it, they can display it like this as well on their mantelpiece. So then people can then just pop that out there. And I think it's a wow. Do you agree? I'm gonna to have to stop playing with it, sorry. So there we have it. So I hope you have enjoyed today's Fun Fold Friday. I suppose it's not really a, a fun fold in the traditional sense, as in what I have been bringing to you, but I think this is definitely a fun card to make. There is some folds in it and it is different. So I'm still classing it as a, a Fun Fold Friday project, um, but I think it's just a Fun Fold project, which packs a, packs a punch. And I think this would be lovely for anyone for Christmas. Now again, this Magic Slider card doesn't necessarily just have to be for Christmas. Any image you've got on this, as long as you've got some line art that you can color, you, as long as you've got the ability to stamp onto some window sheets to make sure that you've got an image which is exactly the same, then you can turn this into any card you want any time of the year, okay? So really, really good. Um, if you've got a nice big birthday sentiment where you can then, which has got suitable for coloring, you can then have happy birthday on here, but then as they lift up, it then turns into a color. So 
there's there's all sorts but hopefully with this video tutorial you now feel a bit more confident to actually make this card on your own and have a go at doing this we would love to see what you actually create so if you do create anything like this please tag us if you post it on social media we would love to be able to see what you've actually created as well all right so with that mind now on that note we would love to be your preferred demonstrator, so if you would like to shop with us, please, again, links to our online shop can be found down below. Um, you can shop with us if you live anywhere in the UK, France, Germany, Netherlands, or Austria, okay? Um, yeah, so links to our online shop can be found down below as well. If you live elsewhere in the world and you would like to help support us, there is a donation button down below as well, as well as in the super chat over in the chat if you're watching this live. That is over there as well. Anything goes to just help us bring you these videos and continue to help just continue to support us. So anything is appreciated, but no pressure. All right. Anything like that, links can be found down below in the description. Lovely. So I hope you have enjoyed today's Fun Fold Friday. We will be back with you again next Friday with another fold. Remember, if you've got any requests, please email us, Barry and Jay at matusucrafts.com with anything you would like to see. And I will maybe have a go at it if I can. Excellent. Thanks very much for watching. See you again very soon. Take care for now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.